It's a typical Sunday in the town of Florence. Downtown businesses are busy, tourists are shopping and eating out. For Michelle McGray, she and her husband enjoy Oregon's beauty from this home on Hasita Beach, but they are all too aware of the dangers of living on this oceanside property. You know, recognize it's a risk. A high risk, according to OSU marine geologist Chris Goldfinger. The Wanda Fuca plate subducting underneath North America. He's talking about a mega thrust earthquake and tsunami, which could happen in our lifetime. On a scale of 1 to 10, how prepared do you feel like we are along the coast? Oh, I, I would say we're not even to 1 yet. These images are from the 2011 tsunami in Japan, which occurred from the same type of fault we have right here off the Oregon coast. Goldfinger says the same thing can and will happen here in Oregon. We just don't know when. What are the odds that something like this happens in our lifetime? So we're sitting at 10 to 15 percent chance of a magnitude 9 event, which doesn't sound like much. In Japan, they were sitting at about 20 percent in 2011. Right here, roughly 60 miles off the Oregon coast, that's where the Wanda Fuca plate is subducting under the North American plate. Right now, as we speak, it is building pressure and it will erupt someday. Seismologists say that we will feel non-stop shaking for four to five minutes. That shaking would be the earthquake, and that is the warning sign that a tsunami is on the way. Northern Oregon 340, Southern Oregon 320. He's showing us the average due dates for when the next major earthquake could cause a tsunami offshore. Off the coast of Oregon, it's about every 320 years. The last time it ruptured, was in 1700, exactly 321 years ago. Keep in mind, that's an average. The shortest period between quakes, 120 years. The longest period between quakes, 1190 years. Now you might be wondering why some earthquakes that occur off the Oregon coast cause tsunamis while others don't. And that's because not all fault lines are the same. A few weeks ago, the earthquakes that occurred were here in the fault shaded in green. Earthquakes that occur here will not trigger a tsunami, but the ones that happen along the Cascadia subduction zone, shaded in red, will trigger a tsunami. The reason why is because every fault is different. The faults shaded in green are either diversion or transform, meaning that they either slide past one another or they spread apart. The Cascadia subduction zone, however, is a convergent fault meaning that the Wanda Fuca plate is subducting under the North American plate. Right now, it is building pressure, and eventually, one day, it will rupture. The question is, what would happen to towns like Florence? Florence is, is more low-lying. There isn't very much of Florence that's up on a bluff. There'll be a little bit of delay time as the wave works its way up the river, but the, those downtown businesses are they're pretty close to the ocean. Goldfinger says the initial wave would be 40 to 60 feet tall and moving at 20 to 30 miles per hour. This map shows exactly what would happen to a town like Florence. And you start to inundate uh, not only the waterfront, but you start to get back up into the town. 40 to 60 minutes later, we would see inundation as far up the river as Mapleton. Uh, you have a sequence of different structures. Pedro Lamonico has devoted his entire career to figuring out how to build better tsunami resilient structures. He's the director of the Hindale Wave Research Laboratory at OSU. The houses that are less strong are going to be easier to be destroyed. He says most homes and bridges aren't built to withstand a magnitude 9 earthquake, mostly because they were built before the Cascadia subduction zone was even discovered in 1970. He says if we are to be prepared, we would need to rebuild our infrastructure, something that takes time and money. And what happens when you have a building that is elevated where the uh, space underneath the structure allows the water to go through? Things like rebuilding bridges and designing homes to be built on stilts. He also says improving tsunami warning time is important. Right now, tsunami data is detected by buoys in the ocean, but he is testing out whether or not these fiber optic cables, which are used for telecommunication, can also be used to detect tsunami waves. Uh, instead of having uh, to deploy in some locations buoys, what we do is we use the, the existing um, uh, devices, for example, the, the fiber optics, to measure the wave conditions. 
This could provide more lead time for potential tsunamis in the years to come. <coughs> Meanwhile, in coastal towns like Florence, city managers say they are ready for the worst. We're planning for um, that Cas Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. We make sure we have staff that are trained to assess buildings. Um, for safety after an earthquake. Mesmer says in the event of a mega earthquake, people should evacuate by foot to higher ground, not by car. Her biggest concern is the elderly population who may not be able-bodied. It's knowing your capabilities. Uh, we can't necessarily plan for everything, but we can uh, prepare ourselves uh, individually. She says know where the highest ground is. In the event of a tsunami, we'd have about 20 minutes to get the higher ground. If you don't think you can evacuate by foot, then that's simply a risk you assume living along the coast. Towns like Florence are offering more educational seminars to be informed. They are also putting more signs like this on their main roads, so you know when you've escaped a tsunami zone. Goldfinger says have a plan now, because complacency is our enemy. It's, it's kind of a long-term evolution of getting people to recognize that it's real and then getting people to act takes takes even longer. It doesn't sound to me like this is a matter of if, but a matter of when. It is indeed uh, a matter of when. And for those enjoying the natural beauty along the coast, be aware and be prepared. Keep enjoying it, but have a plan so that when the big one happens, whatever your plan is becomes second nature. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dylan Robichaud.